Alright, and welcome to the Okie Show Show, the podcast that dives into the finer details of navigating Oklahoma's film and music industries. I'm Brian, your host, and I am joined today by two fellas, one of which has actually been on the show before. You were on our Star Wars kind of freestyle riff special, nice. which is to this day one of my favorite episodes. Mr. Joel Decker. Hey. Yay! Yeah, you said I was the first one that used a whole bunch of profanity. You were and responsible I'm, for I'm, your I'm first. I'm expecting ex- the same thing tonight. Well, <laughs> so after no. we recorded the Star Wars thing, he's like, "Oh man, I'm gonna have to put explicit on it because it's so dirty." And I'm was like, "Oh, I didn't know we couldn't talk about fucking." Like I didn't know. <laughs> oh well, now you got another one. <laughs> there, <it is. laughs> there you go. Now you got another one of them stickers. Yeah, no, it took like 30 seconds for the first joke, and I was like, "We're doing this." And, well, and here we go. We're pushing going through. through. But uh, so comedian Joel Decker is joining us in the studio as well as Mr. Spencer Hicks. Uh, you just released a comedy album. Thank you. It literally just came out like a week ago, didn't it? Uh, December 25th. Along with Spencer. Oh, just, so a week ago. Perfect. Yeah, one week ago. <laughs> one week ago. When is this being released? Right. Three months from now? Perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just wait till the year rolls around and be like, perfect. Just put it out next year. Yeah. But you also co-own OKC Comedy, which tell the audience I'm, a little bit about all We're going to say co-founded. Co-founded, uh, okay. Because we don't really own anything. Uh, we don't have- You a, own a concept. We don't have a building. We no. just have taxes we have to pay. Right. Hey, but that's modern economy. Yep. How, how Digital we economy. This, Bernie Sanders. This. President Bernie Sanders, because you're airing this next year, right? Yeah, okay. yep, yep. yep. President, yeah. I, president, I don't know. Yeah. I'm terrified. I am too. So talk about OKC okay. Comedy. Oh, OKC okay, Comedy. We, uh, it's just a, a group of comics who decided that uh, we wanted to start booking our own shows. And so uh, we did. We booked our own shows out at the uh, City Arts Center for a couple of years. We have since moved over to the ACM at UCO at Bricktown. Nice. Um, and we just we bring in yeah it's uh, the performance lab isn't it yeah the performance like how lab. many people does that hold it's like three hundred three three really yeah. oh, I thought it was five no it's yeah that's three. a great venue I mean if it's if it's standing it's probably a lot more but uh, okay see, yeah I know I know it from like bands and yeah. stuff like yeah yeah I saw Nathaniel Ratliff there and there was way more than three hundred people there yeah. was there yeah yeah I always forget for comedy it's all but sitting. no seats yeah, yeah. well if you buy a seat at comedy club. You, you you only need the edge. Is you only need the edge because they cause, say that for truck things. Yep, and comedy things. Yep, comedy shows. You'll so, pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to be doing today is we're talking kind of uh, just basic performance of stand up comedy. You know, for those of you that are that are interested, that have been that are obsessed with listening to it, and I've always thought to yourself, man, I want to do that. Huh? I want to grab the mic. Yeah. This is this is for you. So how does somebody get involved in performing stand up? Specifically in Oklahoma City, but then we can talk like broader Yeah. Specifically in Oklahoma City I think is pretty much the same anywhere. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There's no it's not uh like acting. It's not like mm-hmm. you have to go audition, talk to this ca- go talk to this casting director. It is right a microphone on a stage in front of people and that's it like yeah it's it, it's instant feedback you put your name on a piece of paper some other guy will say your name and then you talk into a microphone right <laughs> and hopefully you bomb <laughs> well, no Honestly, like I, i'm yeah. very serious like because you know dave deacon deacon in, uh, deacon? in, deacon in uh, denver yeah he uh, runs denver an, deacon he runs he runs yeah. an open mic at uh he used to, I don't know if he still does, but at Comedy Works, which is like a revered stand-up venue, yeah. like stand-ups love it. Yeah. And I went up there and visited him when I was kind of first starting, and he was like, do you want to do some time? And I was like, yeah, sure. I, got I love that that's the phrase, do you want to do some time? Like, it is like, it just it is like a prison me. sentence. Yeah. Me. You want to do some time? Sure. Yep. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, okay. And I got up there, and I did three minutes, and... I could have done anything. First of all, it's sold out. Like, there's 300 oh, plus fun. people That's there on a Tuesday. Show. It wasn't my first show ever, but it was my first show there. Ah, uh, okay. And so I did it, and I was like, God bless. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> and he said, but here's the thing. He said, in Oklahoma City, he goes, I got a group of guys up here that think, oh, well, every show that I do is going to be this way. And he said, I couldn't take the guys I have up here to the Looney Bin on a Wednesday because I've been there. And you right. gotta work for it. Like yeah, you gotta you gotta is earn way that. Freaking tougher. Whereas in a larger market, and not necessarily like in LA, there's a, a million open mics in New yeah. York yeah. too, but you get spoiled. Like if you're if if you do good, good for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are people locally 
who have done well maybe twice, right. and I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. Because in one way, like when you have to work for it, it makes you work for it. Like I almost like how there's only there's only so many open mics throughout the week that you can go to. Like right. one open mic Tuesday for some reason is like the mecca of open open mics. But uh, it's always the same people at every single one of these. Right. Like all the comics just migrate together to all these different open mics. Yeah, so and, like, and and it, but. But that's a double-edged sword too, because yeah, because I don't feel like I can repeat bits. But that's it's the but same people group. do, and like yeah. I think that I I don't go to open mics because of that. Because I'm like, you guys are just making each other laugh with the same jokes you told last night. Like, yeah, I ha- I don't. There there are a handful of people who have honed their craft doing that. Sure. But then you get the other 70 percent. They're like, I want to be I want to be a comedian. I want to be those guys. Mm. Well. Stop talking about your dick on stage. And then, you know, <laughs> no. I mean, I think it's the interesting thing that I have learned because I'm I'm very new to it. Like I've done maybe fifteen open mics, mm-hmm. maybe I'm and that's like stretched out over a year, so yeah. it's not steady. So let let me ask you this: you you were a musician, you performed. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of musicians who are like, I'd like to get into comedy. Yeah. What, what's I mean? What what's the attraction? Yeah, is it just the performance aspect? Is it? I think well, it's because like whenever you're a musician, you're you have to fill in time. Everybody has some kind of story in between songs. Yeah. There's that dead space in between songs that you are directly interacting with the audience. Mm-hmm. And like for me, I was I love just listening to stand up and like there's just that exhilaration of like actually saying something that people laugh to, making right. making noises with your mouth. Yeah, that just the perfect combination something. of words that yeah. make people yeah. ha- go ha ha. Like it's it's and it's fascinating to me. Like yeah. the science of like this to me it is that like this combination of words said with these particular this cadence mm-hmm. lands with these people, but then sometimes it doesn't with the exact same thing. And it's just it's just interesting to me. Like the right. structure of jokes and all that kind of stuff is just it's really cool. Yeah. Because like laughter is a physical reaction to a situation, you know, based on your personality. It, it, like I feel like there's psychology behind it. It's just really yeah. really cool. And I was actually I was talking to a friend of mine about how like it's how we deal with uh, tragedy. It's how we deal like laughter is how we deal with tragedy. Laughter is how we deal with stuff that we don't that kind of rocks our understanding of something right. of like um it's a disruption of patterns in a way yeah of like that's what a juxtaposition is it's like a tree a bush a rock or you know something that breaks the pattern right. of like something in this line is not the same right or like a misdirection of something yeah like talking about what you think is your grandpa when actually it was your family dog oh yeah. hilarious yeah. i saw that movie it's a great <laughs> Tom Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> and Tom Cruise for some reason. Yeah. He voiced the dog. Yeah. Scrappo. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wait, you guys are talking about a real thing? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, wish. No. 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 Seriously. I had a music. Does this sound like a movie Tom Arnold would be in? Well, I know. That's why I said. <laughs> I know. Voiced it was by perfect. Tom Cruise. Uh, Tom Arnold, who retweeted me recently. No shit. Hey. <laughs> I'm living the dream. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a musician tell me he wanted to do comedy because, and I'm quoting, I'm tired of worrying about these five assholes with me on stage. It, well, honestly, it's true so, because like the mentality. You got to worry about everybody yeah. else. Yeah, there's like there's. I think that's the other thing that kind of attracted me to it was like I don't have to load anything in. No I load don't have in. to pack anything up. Yeah. You're saying that I could just go up there with one microphone and my human body and yeah. voice and just do something and then leave. Unless yeah. you're Carrot Top or Jeff Dunham. True story. Right. Yeah. Then you got to yeah. bring yeah. trunks full of stuff. But you trunks. have people. You trunks. have people for that. Well, yeah, eventually. But man, when you're starting out. Ah. Oh. If only to be a comedy magician. <sighs> Gotta load up. God, how I want to be a comedy magician. I worked one week with a guy. Couldn't have been sweeter. Sweet, sweet guy. Clearly, like, older than he was coming across. I'm like, this dude's, like, in his 50s. And he was uh, featuring. And his whole act was juggling. And, and real, real quick, explain featuring. Okay. Uh an MC will get up at a typical comedy show. They'll be the host. They'll be the host, basically, be and do doing, 10, 10 to 15 minutes. They'll do introductions, talk about drink specials. Make the club announcements. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on out on Sundays. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tip the wait staff. And then they'll introduce the feature act. And the feature act is typically from out of town, yep. and he'll do 20 to 30 minutes. And then he'll get done, and then the MC gets back. I was like, hey, give it up for that guy. Woo! And then bring up the headliner. Right. And... And I'll, either the feature actor or the headliner 
will uh, you'll always introduce them by saying uh, clubs and colleges. Uh, you've seen them at clubs and colleges all across the nation. Serious right. XM Radio. That yeah. means they don't have any credits. On- Bob and Tom. You've heard them on Bob and Tom. That means they have no credits. Right. That means they couldn't pinpoint anything. You've seen them on NBC. No, you didn't. Yeah. You didn't. Comedy Central. Yeah, prove them wrong, though. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can't. Um, Everyone's just Googling that real quick. No, right. not Fact at checking. a comedy club. Yeah. No, that's, like, yeah, that's, strict that's rules the about the phones. You can't, you can't have your cell phones out because no, these guys are rule the comics. That was a rule I totally forgot about until I did the Looney Ben open mic. Yeah, and then like I was dicking around in my, I was actually doing a taking an Instagram picture. Oh and no! The, and the bouncer dude came up. No, 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 put yeah. it down. I was like, oh, so I forgot. The oh, the classic here. the classic line in the Looney Bin is. Uh, if you get a text or a phone call, you need to be alone with your phone. Go into the lobby, and you two can spend yeah. some time together. Uh, yeah. You're, so you were telling a story about a comedy magician. So worked at, well, he was but. a magician, but he's a feature hack, and he juggled, and he had a trunk, and he would do stuff like. Uh, so the other day, I was wondering like what it would be like if I had one ball. Like it's I'm making that up, but clearly, I mean, it was clearly like that, and he'd end up with like four balls juggling, and people would be like, "Oh, yay!" And I'm like, "But that's not funny." Yeah. So I asked the headliner, who was a grizzled comedy veteran, like he'd been a road comic for a million years. And he's from New York, and I, I would try to, you know, talk to him. What just be nice? And I go, hey, so what do you think of the feature act? And he goes, uh, I don't go into his juggling clubs and try to do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, sir. Uh, Touche. Uh, juggling clubs, they are very well known. Was this juggling comic, was his closer, did he put on like... A giant and, sweatshirt and have and long arms. Long arms? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that dude. Sweetest guy. I haven't seen him in a long time. He, so that actually brings me to my next question. Like we're talking about like, you know, juggling, a, you know, a comedian with a very intri- specific angle. Yeah. Like, can we talk about the different styles of stand up comedy? Yeah. For just a like bit? what? Um, like, what do you mean by I, that? I mean by like uh, the difference between um, observational and absurdist. Uh, one-liners versus, you know, like, shot comedy. Yeah. Like, all the different genres and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think people, they're all definitely all those genres you just named. Um, Next but, question. But then, no, no, but, no. No, but then like, people <laughs> people kind of also carve out their own. Yeah. Like... I think some of the best comics take the best parts of all of those. Yeah. yeah. Like, Steve like, Martin is is kind of Steve hard. Steve Martin is... It's kind of hard to... Categor- he's not... He's got one-liners. He's got he's stories. A, he, he's, but he's he's a stand-up, technically. Yeah. He had some props, too. Would you call too. it, like, yeah. prop, prop comedy? Because he also did a lot of magician stuff, too. Yeah, he's but he was not a prop actually. comic. Like, yeah. that's the thing. He's a stand-up more than he's a... If you can get on stage and make someone laugh without, you know, having a rubber chicken with you... Right. Then you're a stand-up. And I think Steve Martin could do that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, I don't think Carrot Top could do that. Right. right, and nothing against him. He's got his. You audience. have the thing against Carrot Top. That's a second Carrot Top reference tonight. So, what are your what What are your favorite comics like? Um, my man, my favorites kind of shift because it starts like I'll go from like Shane Moss to T.J. Miller, mm-hmm. back to Louis C.K. It always reverts back to Louis C.K. and Patton Oswalt. Yeah, <laughs> and then like starting like I've been listening to a lot more Kyle Kinane and um, um Nate Bargatze, Bill Burr, Bill Burr. Oh, dude, I love Bill Burr. You got to be in the mood for Bill Burr, just as much as you have to be in the mood for David Cross. Like you have Bill to be Burr in puts the me in the mood. Man, right? I love Bill Burr. I think Bill Burr is great. I think David Cross, his "Shut Up You F-ing Baby" album is one of my favorite <laughs> comedy albums ever. Yeah. And he had a special on HBO. Like aside from his Mr. Show stuff, he had a special on HBO that was so he did so many absurd things in it. But then he'd come back around with a joke that was like really solid. Yeah. So that's someone that like takes. Yeah. Takes from different. I mean, I don't like and a lot of people. Do I don't like Jeselnik. I haven't heard of him. Uh, Anthony Jeselnik. Anthony mm-hmm. Jeselnik. A lot of roast stuff. Yeah. He. Oh, uh, okay. Kind he, of a darker but, comedy. But that's, every, that's a different style in itself. Is just roast comedy. Yeah. But every joke in his special though is set up, set up, punchline you think is coming, mm. punchline you didn't know was coming, which contradicts the first punchline right. for ninety minutes. Interesting. Or an hour, whatever. Yeah. See, that's a. Yeah, I think he's a good writer. That, that, I think he's like got some good stuff. Direction but... kind of stuff. Like I love looking. Which hell? Why don't we just go ahead and talk about that? Like the structure of a joke. Like the whole. Like, for me, and this is coming from somebody that's been doing it for only like a year mm-hmm. of like set up punchline and then elaborate on the punchline and then move on. Like yeah. each joke is a minute and then it's like a solid. Okay, moving on to the next yeah. one. Ah. Well, you go set up. What is it? Set up punchline tag. Like yeah. It, but if you but see that the the weird thing with stand up is there is no formula. 
Like yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like that is an observation because I do like observational stuff. Yeah. And... Did you watch John Mulaney's last special? I did. His closer is twenty minutes long. Yeah, and it's great. Did you see it? Is that the Come comeback back kid? Yeah, I loved it. Twenty minutes. I didn't think it was as good as the, t- as the top part, but yeah, but but we had that but that's somebody yesterday. that yeah, but that's somebody that's not set up set up punchline. No. Dimitri Martin is someone that does different things, yeah. even though you think it's. Yeah. It's all in how it's packaged. Right. I mean, I don't think you can teach somebody to be funny. Yeah. At the, all. The funny thing I've always thought was like everybody, because I, I have been writing comedy for like film, videos and films and stuff like that for for a while. And like the first thing that you always are told is don't try to be funny. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then as a stand-up comic, you jump up on a stage and grab a microphone Basically saying, I think I'm funny. I'm going to, and your job is literally to try to be funny. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, I think but sometimes is your, that comes yeah. across. Like sometimes you can get up there, and you can see people who are like, ah, and they're, you can tell they're trying too hard. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think mean, I think there's a difference between trying to be funny and trying to make someone else laugh. Yeah, right. And that when when you are trying to be funny, you're not focused on what's working. You're focused on is what I'm saying great. Yeah. Well, you're gonna know. If you're focusing it's stand up. You. You're gonna know. Yeah. yeah. It's right there. I mean, That's Seinfeld really... has said it a million times, and it sounds cliched and stupid because it's been said so many times. There is no better barometer than getting on stage in front of a group of strangers mm-hmm. and, and trying it. Yeah. yeah. And it's so unnatural because it's like, what other situation, aside from like an AA meeting, would you get up in front of people, that, a massive group of people that you don't know and be like, yeah. hey, I'm going to talk about stuff that you yeah. might care about, you might not. Yeah. Right. That's what I do instead of going to open mics. I just go to AA <laughs> just, <laughs> try it out. What's the deal with beer, guys? Shopping carts, am I right? Those jacky-ass wheels? I hate them. <laughs> I was drinking a great shot of whiskey the other day. <laughs> you should have been there. I need a chip. <laughs> <laughs> so what's some advice... Um, that you guys could give to like the beginning comic on just beginning. If you're wanting to jump up on the stage for the first time, what would you have to say to that person? Like just advice. I think for me getting on stage was the hardest part. Um, Losing a bet. (laughs) (laughs) I I wish it had been a lost bet. I would probably would have started sooner. Like I started when I was in eighth grade, I, I bought Greg Dean's book on how to write jokes and do stand up comedy and, and so, like, from eighth grade until I was 24, like, I would just write and dream about getting on stage or whatever. Whenever I turned 21, I started going to Looney Bins open mics and would watch it and be like, okay, I'll just I'll sign up next week. And then I'd go out there and be like, nah, 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 this isn't the week. I'll do it next week. I did that for three goddamn years. But did you have friends that were pushing you to it, or was this just something you wanted to do? This was just something I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the week I did it, I had I went there with a friend, and he was like... Just do it, and I was like, "Okay." Everybody has that friend that you're like, "No, oh, that was just anything. shut up and do it." I'm sick. Of, I'm sick hearing Stop you talk being about a pussy. It. Get yeah. up there. Uh, that's that's almost exactly how I started because I, I would always go to the open mics like wanting to you know sign up, and then finally the bartender actually was like, "You doing it?" I was like, "No." He's like, "Pussy." Like, yeah. Fine, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> I bet we find out it's the same guy. I bet we find out it's the same dude. <laughs> right. He's like a wizard <laughs> yeah, he that just, ushers a sage people that in. That travels around. Yeah. He like He's enters. Been, He's like Mr. Smith in the Matrix. He just takes over other people's. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to do stand up comedy? Where are you, <laughs> pussy? Pussy. He only has yeah. eight words. That's it. Uh, no stand up, pussy. Oh, all right. Uh, so just getting up there is the first thing. And then, like, what else would you, what advice would you give? Just do it. I mean, that, it sounds dumb. But also, be aware you're probably not going to do very good. Yeah. And that's okay. I think and it's there's a fine good. line between confidence and ego. Right. Yeah. And I've seen both. Mm-hmm. And uh, ego is worse because you're not able to improve. Right. If you get on stage and you think, okay, there's there's a perfect example in 2000. Dave Deacon. Yep. He um, there was an open mic thing that I started going to at Joker's downtown in Bricktown, which ah, people Jokers. still think is open. Yeah. Well, it's because the sign is still it's faded, but it's still there. There's a Del Rancho near my house. It's been closed for seven years, and nobody asked me if that's still open. <laughs> because um, bushes are growing out yeah, of the windows. True. They don't have that at Joker's. So it's El Ranch. No. <laughs> um, and there was this guy, and he was probably in his mid to late forties, and his name was uh, Curtis, and uh, he doesn't live here anymore, thank God, and. Deacon had been doing Santa for a while and he had, I mean, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to stand up. Like 
I don't think you can teach somebody to be funny, but yeah. you can absolutely teach someone how to act in a club and what you yeah. need to do to form a set. Like, yeah, this might not be a set that's going to work for you, but this is how you build a set. This is what you want, you know, a laugh per minute, maybe. So work on that. Um, and this guy was just, he had the worst delivery. He had the worst material and he, he was terrible. <laughs> and Deacon is like super even keel. Like this is the only time I've seen him get mad and I've known him forever. We've been coming in there week after week and Curtis is finally like, Dave, Deacon was like, Hey, let me have your set. I'll look at it and see what I can do. Cause Curtis asked him to. So he gave him back notes the following week. The week after that, after Curtis had looked at him, he gets on stage, didn't listen to a thing, mm. didn't change a thing. And Deacon was like, none of what you're saying, you, why did you ask me to do this? And Curtis said, well, my friends think it's funny. And Deacon goes, well, your fucking friends aren't here, man. Like, you, you have to understand that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, I'm not meaning to come across like an asshole, but if, if you make your friends laugh, that doesn't mean you should be on stage. And right. I don't think people get that. Like, just because your aunt tells you every holiday, like, you should be doing stand-up. Yeah. And you get on should stage. You? Yeah, no, you shouldn't. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is go to an open mic and just watch these terrible people living in denial. I think that's one of the things that motivated me too. Why? After a few just years see, of watching it, terrible, yes, yes, I was here. like, I was like, yeah. I can do just as bad. They're yeah. fine. Yeah. They love it. Well, De- Deacon, Wait, had, but see, Deacon had told me that, and I agree with this. That the only reason you are on stage is because you saw somebody. And went, well, I can do that. And it didn't yeah. mean that you thought that you were better than them. Yeah. And some people go, well, I saw Seinfeld. I can do that. That'd be fun. I want to do that. I was the, I was kind of the opposite, like you. I was like, that guy sucks <laughs> terribly. And he's getting paid. No, no, no. No, I, I know. Yeah. I, I have confidence. Yeah, today. I have confidence in nothing else but that yeah, I'm yeah. funny. And so. That's, yeah. Like that very thing, like, made it okay for me to bomb. Like, I, it, like, I don't feel like I. I've had maybe one set that I left like going, God, f- like you know, like really beating myself up. But like, but you got back up. Of that, yeah, but you got yeah, back up. Yeah. And I think if you bomb and you go, well, f- them. Right. No, 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 yeah. it's no. not the audience's fault. Yeah, don't. Uh, to a point, like there are yeah. bad audiences. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, there's bad audiences. Oh, we're we're gonna talk about that. But I've seen so many people that are terrible and not funny. Yeah. And they get off stage like, well, it's all their fault. Like, you guys just don't get it. Right. No, we got it. Like, you're, yeah. you're talking for five minutes about your dick. No, nobody cares. Yeah. Right. What are you saying? I was, actually, I was talking to a comic last night. Um, how he he had a joke that like just landed so hard, like consistently, and he did it for this one particular audience, and it was just like crickets. And, and like he actually stopped and he was like, no, 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 we're gonna do that again because that joke is good. And he did it again, and then they actually got it the second time. So, uh, so mean, there is kind of, kind of a kind thing, of hacky. That, like, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. But I mean, like, but that kind of leads me to the whole thing of like, there are good audiences and there are bad audiences. That's true. Yeah. And that's the same with music too. Like it's, it's this weird phenomenon of you're playing the same thing, you're doing it exactly the same way yeah. and it doesn't land. But there are times where you do have to change something you go, oh, okay. Whether you record yourself or you listen to it and. It's like a reading the crowd kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the other side of that is I got told by a friend who's a musician because I told him, I said, man, people come up to me like when I'm done performing, they're like, man, you're really funny. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't, you know, I mean, I didn't think the show went that well. And they're like, no, you know, we thought it was funny. And he told me a very important thing to remember. He said he, he was played a set one night with his band and a lady came up and said, Hey, I just want to tell you that I thought you were really good. And he said, really? I thought we kind of sucked. Yeah. And she got sad he said he saw her emotionally change like her face changed and she just looked at him and said you know what Fuck you and wow. walked out and he was like perception is reality like right. that's the only time she'd seen them right. he's like i've been doing this forever i've been playing these songs over and over she'd never seen it right. and for her to muster up the courage to say hey i really appreciate what you did yeah and with comedy you kind of i mean with any performance i think you have to do that yeah, yeah. i've never really thought about it like that yeah that's very that's, insightful that's very insightful like, if anybody comes up to me, even if I bombed, and they're like, hey, man, good job. I'm like, hey, thank you. Yeah. And they walk away. I'm like, what an idiot. Yeah. But, you know, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> say, yeah, hey, stupid. <laughs> I've kind of learned that, like, like especially with music. Like, you don't want to bum out the person who, who like you said, like, they took the time. They paid to see to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you're and like, then they, oh, they, they, man, they mustered up enough whatever it is to and come. And it's kind and, of like telling them, oh, you're, you don't know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. You're dumb. Yeah. It was a bad set. But you like, don't want anybody to feel stupid or bullied or. Right. Yeah. But. Spencer, talk about 
like you were talking about confidence versus ego, and then you touched on perception is reality. Can you talk a little bit about confidence on stage? Like when you're, because I feel like the audience can always tell if you're feeling, you know, confident or if yeah. you're feeling like, uh, and you start to wither. Right. And you can tell that with, with new people, like, especially if they're forced to do like longer sets. And I think probably, I know I had this problem. I don't know if other comics did, but like, you know, when you transition from doing open mics where you're doing like four minutes, four minute sets, you've got your, you've got your time down, you've got it figured out. It's all good or whatever. But then you do either show like a showcase that your friend put on where you're supposed to do like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And like, maybe you're doing some stuff that you don't have as much confidence as you have been. Right. You haven't thoroughly like, beta tested it. Right. Are you saying it overshadows the rest of it? No, I'm just saying like, if you don't, tell that joke with the same conviction as, as yeah. say like, you know, you've got your five minute set you're confident in, you know, these things get last. You, you don't like, sell the new stuff as hard as you're selling the old right. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like people can tell, I think for sure. And, and I mean, things like, like what you were saying earlier when like, you know, comic was like told a joke and he's like, this joke always hits or whatever. And then the crowd didn't get it or whatever. And he was like, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like that to me is like, that's a real easy way to drive a wedge in there. Yeah. Yeah, there was one of two ways that was. I'm gonna sure go, he had and better he delivery than what I just lucky said. That, yeah, I know, but if you, I've never done that. I've I, never I would done that. Never do that. No. Yeah. If something bombs, just move on. To I the feel, next. Yeah, I'm like, well, yeah. maybe this next one will hit. Yeah. Hey, can we talk about how how you guys go about recovering from a bomb? I don't care anymore. <laughs> just, it just still like, bothers ah, me. Whatever. It still bothers me. Like, I, I have such anxiety about so much, but I internalize everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, there have been times where <clears throat> even just emceeing at the Looney Bin, like, I feel like I'm going to puke, like, every time. And I worked for the Thunder, and I'm not like, look at me. They had to be an open mic in front of 18,000 people, and I would get out there and, like, here I am with Brian, and he's going to shoot <laughs> for whatever. I was so panic-stricken, like, the whole time. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I cannot, like... I don't know you, you recover from that. Like, yeah, I feel it, like that's, do you like mean recovering from a joke that doesn't away. fly? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? A joke or a like, whole set? Well, a single joke, like whenever you're doing a set, I, it's I going don't. well. And then you hit that one that just doesn't land at all. I don't care. Just crickets. Yeah. Don't I don't care. care. It, it bothers me a little bit in the moment, but I'm already up there. Like the hardest part was getting up there. Every time the hardest part's like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. And then if you do moderately well, it feels like six seconds. Like yeah. it's like, you're not even yeah, up there. That's true. But if you bomb, it takes forever. <laughs> yeah, it takes it takes forever. But recovering from like a joke, I don't. I mean, there's no I go to just, thing. I just blame the joke. Yeah, I yeah. Just say that I've joke done that before. Yeah, <laughs> and then I just I take the crowd side. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like, like that. I, I, I yeah. hate me too. Yeah, that jokes. Yeah. That jokes. I'm never telling that again. Yeah, yeah. you know, just saying something. I haven't. I haven't figured it, it, out. Get like, it out. Get it out it's self deprecation. Way. Like right, right, right. The key is to let them know that you're on their side. Yeah. So. Whereas your friend was like, or guy that you saw, whomever, where he was like, well, you just didn't get it. Well, that's almost the same thing as saying, no, we suck. You're wrong. Yeah. Right. Well, they've already laughed at you. Like, they've given you that much. Yeah. So if you have a joke that bombs, you can't blame it on them. Like, you can't come back and go like, no, fuck you. I'm going to make it happen <laughs> again. Like, yeah. no means no. Right. And right. so they're That's not, what we're getting at. No means this no. This is coming around back to Bill Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was nice. Oh, uh, that's a callback. So then how do you recover from bombing a set? Mentally, alcohol helps. physically, spiritually. Alcohol helps. Alcohol helps alcohol, immediately. Alcohol, yeah. But also knowing that it's weird. You either bomb and you're like, I'm no. And there have been times where I'm like, I shouldn't be on set. Like, right. Yeah. Like at the Looney Bin, they used to have Sunday night shows. Mm. And those are the worst. The weekend shows, like, yeah. second show Saturday, 99% of the time. I say 90% of the time. Which show? Either first or second show Saturday. Yep. Fridays are usually pretty good. Like, Fridays are from, always awesome. From a performance standpoint, like I know people that go and they love it, yep. but as, yeah. from a performance standpoint, Fridays are good. Yep. Saturdays, either the first show or the second show, you get off stage and you're like, I should do this for all the time that I have in the <laughs> yeah. world. Like This is what uh, I should be doing. I'm amazing. I'll never die. Well, then they, then they used to have Sunday shows. And you do that Sunday show, and you're like, I shouldn't be allowed near a microphone yeah. where people can hear me. Like, I should talk to them and tell them to never let me hear again. Yeah. I think an important point Inter that you're kind of touching on also is that it doesn't matter how experienced you are, like, you're still going to bomb at some point. 
It's mm-hmm. never sunshine and rainbows. I learn more from bombing ever. than... Yeah, absolutely. That's the most important part. And if any comic tells you, and I, I'm saying comic with air quotes, right? because anybody can, oh, I did an open mic. Mm, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. if they say I've never bombed, they're delusional, <laughs> and they, they shouldn't they be allowed near a microphone. Like, that's narcissism to the nth degree. Like, What's the worst show you ever had? This one. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're stand-up show. <laughs> We're stand-up show. Um, I don't know you. I'll think about it. Uh, I had a guy that had a heart, like, had a, uh, were you there when the old man had, like, a heart attack and, like, it was open what? mic? No. Whoa. This wasn't the worst show, but this is pretty crazy. Um, there was a guy who got on stage, and I think it was from Burns Flat, and he was, like, 80, 85 years old. Friend of Stan Sullivan? Uh, almost. I think he. I think Stan killed him and took his life force. Because <laughs> there can only be one. Be I only always, one. I, I always, whenever Stan's up, I'm always like, are you okay? Like, be okay? Stan's going to outlive everybody. Uh, yeah. Stan's <laughs> yeah, a yeah. hoss. Um, but this old man had like a little breathing machine with him and a, like a tube on his nose. right? And, so, uh, and he drove like two and a half hours. And he gets on stage. <laughs> Take a long and he's breath. Like, oh, oh, oh! It was <laughs> terrible because he, yeah, he would. He'd be like, <sighs> in between each sentence. The other day, President Coolidge, <laughs> and you're like, God bless, what's happening? So at the at the Looney Bin, you can enter from either stage left or stage right. He decide he goes, oh, oh, I'm not feeling good, and walks right off the front of the stage <laughs> into a table full of people and drinks. And I'm like, what? I got to save the show. So that's how he, oh. I was like, I got on stage before I went and helped him. And the oh, bouncers man. came over. The ambulance showed up. I was like, <laughs> they're, they're, crazy. they're yeah. taking care of him and like putting, giving him the IV while you're still doing your routine. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're you're like, like, Some, somebody what's call the deal with the Keep IV doing time. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep yeah. doing time. Keep doing time. <laughs> somebody call 911. Get off your phone. Oh, see, I can't. Yeah. The rules. <laughs> Uh, the worst show. What about you? What's the worst, worst show? show I ever did? I did a Christmas party for an oil company, and they wanted me to do forty minutes, mm. and they were going to pay me three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And it was in this huge ballroom. There were probably like two hundred people there. Mm-hmm. And um, the CEO was like, "Okay, uh, okay." So this room is a huge ballroom uh-huh. out of like a hotel. Yeah. Uh, the middle is a dance floor, whatever, and then the room is just divided into tables over here and tables over there. Yeah. And the CEO was like, "Okay, uh, we're gonna give away this prize or whatever, and then uh, and then they're gonna eat, and then you can do some comedy or whatever." And so, uh, <laughs> make your little laugh jokes, yeah, yeah. do your monkey thing. So they give away a prize, and he's like, "All right, guys, you guys can eat or whatever, and please welcome to Spencer." <laughs> oh, and so, like, people like, are like, oh. people are like getting up, going to the buffet, like oh, eating. While you're trying to do time, yeah. Oh, oh good. I did like 20 minutes, and I. Like, I was like, it was the, like, no one listened. No one cared. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. You're just speaking into a vacuum. Yeah, I was. And I, I did my 20 minutes. And I was like, I was like, that's my time, guys. Thank you. Oh and then, God. like, I just walked out of there. I just left. Did you get paid? That's a, Mike yeah. Birbiglia has you left without really money? Similar story. I, I left with money. Oh, you left with money. I left oh, with good. money. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. There was one that, um, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I don't know what the worst show. Oh, uh, well, my birthday was pretty bad. Were you there for that? At the speakeasy? Is this yeah. Where you, told yeah. Me about Where you just got drunk and you told the same joke like four times? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because there was a girl that I liked there. It was terrible. <laughs> and then my friends kept like sending me shots. <laughs> now, tell what happened after that, though, when you woke up the next morning. I woke up the next morning and I was covered in blood wearing only my boxers. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because you punched With my leg through, through my pee hole <laughs> yeah. in my boxers. Yeah. I didn't punch. I fell into the French door at that's my right. house, which that's was right. broken. Right on my wrist part, too. Like, it was, like, real close. Like, dangerously close to a vein. But that wasn't too bad of a show. Um, (laughs) It just woke up covered in blood like, uh, rock star life. (laughs) Living the (laughs) dream. I don't know. There, I I don't know. I don't know. Like, there have been quite a few. Yeah. But that was, like, that one was, like, the one that stands out in my mind. Mine? No, mine. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the, my birthday, though. Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I remember, like... Hey. You were still really funny, though. Oh, thanks. Because I was, I was hey, mostly hey. sober. I was sober enough to remember. Yeah. He told the same joke, like, twice. I went into... I was like, who likes the Wu-Tang Clan? And then, like... <laughs> and people were like, you, you already <laughs> said that one? I already said that one. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Hey, the girl was the first one to call me the next day. It lasted, what, nice. two years? And then she ripped my heart out, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that kind of segues into the next question. Oh, wait. Is, oh, sorry. No. I, it finally came. It. The show was fine as New Year's Eve. 
Show was fine. Not great. Fine. Looney bin? Yep. Uh, they used to give a bottle of champagne right. to every table. Hmm. For New Year's Clock Eve. Clock strikes midnight. And I don't know what to do because they end the show early so that way they can they can get the yeah. get the champagne in there and people can go to the bathroom before they count down or whatever. Yeah. So they're like, hey, uh, get on stage. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to get on stage for? Like, they're just playing like celebration. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the headliner clearly had an issue with some sort of extracurricular activity. So he was very sweaty and jumping around a lot. Ah, it shouldn't have been. Right. Uh, he's not a lot of work there anymore. Anyway, so <laughs> he he's like, yeah, man, it's New Year's Eve. Oh. And at 12 midnight, they count out from 10, 12 midnight, somebody in the front row picks up their full bottle of champagne and throws it against the back wall. And you know how far that is? It's like 100 feet. Yeah. Like just Jeez. as hard as they could, and it explodes, and champagne and glass go oh everywhere. So I run back there. A couple of bouncers run back there. And as we turn around, people in the front row had decided to spray the lighting rig above the stage with their champagne oh, bottles. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yikes. And I honestly, I walked out of the showroom, and I was like, nope, no, 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 never <laughs> again. She asked me to do New Year's this year, and I was like, no, I can't. Yeah. My body won't let me. Yeah. Can't do it. Jeez. So I don't know if that's bombing, but that's, you know. It's not bombing. Well, it's a worse show, though. That, I yeah. mean, we're actually kind of already into the next question, which is like, um, what are some of the obstacles you face during a set? <laughs> like, you know, champagne bottles or a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> or well, like, I don't think I've ever Or had, hecklers. You know, just I've that kind hecklers. of stuff. I've had hecklers. Like, how do you I've deal with like these different those obstacles? Kind of, that show we did at Christmas, somebody came up to you. Yeah, that wasn't really a heckler, but we did a... We did, was, it, it worse. Yeah, yeah. We did a uh, a show for uh, some outfit at Tinker Air Force Base. We did this in Midwest City, or whatever. During their lunch break, mm-hmm. they had their Christmas party, so it was already off to like. Well, I knew I knew going into it, my expectations were low. Uh, but during, we were you know we were supposed to do some comedy. We were supposed to do what 15, 20 minutes. And we always clear stuff before, like how clean do you want it? Like, yeah. yeah, they were like PG thirteen is fine. This yeah. is going to be. Yeah. All adults, whatever. And basically, PG thirteen means you're not dropping f bombs and not really, yeah. you're not getting you're not too dirty and like bodily fluids and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So Joel, Joel gets up, does his set, whatever, goes over really well. Majority of the crowd, I thought it went wasn't. well until I made that joke, and then I could tell there was a, sh- a, a shift, shift. Shame, yeah. But then, then we had another comic, Ben Flint, who's super clean, super clean, very good. Where, a lot of like parental, like yeah, very parent, relatable. And yeah. he, but he's got kids, and he's very really likable. Used to, be in, used to be in the military, yeah. so he related that way too. Yeah. But during his set, some olderish woman in her and 50s, Spencer was him saying, "Yeah, I was him saying it." And we were and doing, doing like, a raffle, doing that raffle he got prizes in between <laughs> comics. Yeah, so people are Perfect. winning, people are winning situation. drills and pots and pans, and and yeah. this old woman, not old, is this. I don't know. Just, just a, say it. Some <laughs> cunt yeah. comes up, comes up to me while Ben Flint's doing his set, and she's like, "I thought this was supposed to be a clean show. We got this guy up here." Oh, I thought she said to you, "Like, so are you going to be as dirty as?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She did say that. She did say that. Uh, or, or she goes, "Are you going to be clean? Are you going to be as dirty as these two? Yeah, yeah. And she's making some reference to them, right? Because like Being filthy. Yeah. And I was By like, the way, come to my church later this week. No, well, I was, and I was like, what are you lose. talking about, woman? Yeah. Like they have, during the show, she's approached the, him. And they have not said a word that like <clears throat> like is that I would have done this set in front of like your I, grandparents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like my my parents are pretty conservative. They're Christiany. They would have yeah. ate that. They would have yeah. been eaten out of the palm of his yeah. hand. Like this woman just was looking for something to be offended by. Right. Yeah. So but because the... she was offended, we found out from like other people that like, well, it's nice seeing you guys, but <laughs> are we helping you or are we just bitching? No, no. This, I mean, because like, it seems like a this not is very the most funny selfish podcast. episode that I've done because yeah. like I'm deep in the middle. Like Whoa. I almost kind of started in, like doing a lot more open mics, especially the last couple of weeks. Like yeah. because I knew that this was coming up, so I, I kind of it was like research. Like so, how do you it, feel then? It's it's been a really interesting experience because it's something I've always wanted to do. I've always dreamed of doing and like doing it on a consistent basis and like feeling like wow, I like I I just managed to uh make it into the finals for this comedy contest down in Norman. Yeah. And like that just like blew my mind. So it's just been really really interesting. Is anything that we've said like Oh, are you like, oh, yeah. that that's horseshit? Like, no. Or well, I mean, even if I did say that's horseshit, like, I who am I to say that? 
Well, I mean, the guy that's done like maybe I mean, fifteen open mics. It doesn't matter. Everybody's got their They're, own path, you know. Yeah, yeah. That is the thing with stand up. There is only like one way to get good at it. That's do it. But it could turn into a jillion different things. Yeah. Right. So. Well, what advice would you give? You know, with that in mind. Just do. I mean, just yeah, just just get keep up on the doing stage. it, and don't concentrate too much on the minutia of it. And by that, like. Have you seen comedian Seinfeld's the documentary about Seinfeld? No. It Good. was supposed to document Seinfeld leaving the show, but he wanted to take a year and do time to build a new set. Mm. And it and he ended up befriending this younger comic who was just starting. He's like in his late twenties. Orny Adams. Orny Adams. Mm. And it ended up becoming a documentary that inadvertently showed someone who's passionate about what they do yeah. and doesn't need to do it. Seinfeld does not yeah. need to do it. Yeah. Versus someone who actually in this movie said, part of me thinks I'm giving him a gift. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You don't. Oh, really? Yeah. That's and so it's this interesting dichotomy of yeah. a guy who feels he's earned it. Like, yeah. hey, oh, I should be, I should have made it already. Right. Well, Seinfeld, like he writes jokes, but they asked him, you know, if someone rips you off. This was not in the movie, but like, if someone rips you off, do you care? And he was like, no, I'm, I'm write more. Like they're, they're ripping me off. I mean, that's yeah. fine. Whereas Orny, like record his name was Orny Adams recorded his sets wrote down laughs per minute next to each joke and he's just spending time doing this not writing material like you should be writing funnier things right he's getting too he's like well this one I had you know five LPMs and this one I had ten it's like well no right I think doing it is important um I realize that writing a lot is for me probably the most important like I used to try to write jokes uh, every day, I would try to write three jokes a day. Now I just I've got like a, a journal, and I'll just write in that, and see if anything like pops out, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm not anymore like I don't really sit down and like okay I'm gonna write I'm gonna write five minutes of material right yeah. here. Do you know I've never written a joke? Really, I've never <clears throat> written a joke, and I'm not saying that like look at me. Yeah, I just have never written. I'll write down something that I think is funny. Yeah, and then if there's like a tagline or something, I'll just write that down. But it's like. I'm never like, and then I went into this, but like, I've yeah. never done it. I don't know why. Yeah. See, I'm the very opposite of that. Like you, you write everything you physically write it out like word I, for word. Yeah. I write it out, try to figure out what punch works. And then for all my sets, I always bring up a note card cause I have a certain order I want to do yeah. shit in. So. I'll bring a set list up and they say it's cheating. That's not cheating. I'll bring a set list. David Cross me. brings a set I, list. I write, I Ricky write Gervais. Garofalo titles. brings a, Ricky Gervais is barely a stand up. I mean, I love that guy, but mm. Yeah, like I'll write the titles of the stuff on my hand. Like I don't. I see actually, that's I what I. Yeah, it. that's what I do. Like I'll record the bits on my phone and I'll listen back to it and like practice it. I can't stand. But hear, I, can't, I, I don't I, like I, hearing myself, so I can't. Yeah, well, I, I have to all the time because of this stupid thing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I've grown used to it. But uh, do you find that helps? Oh, totally. Yeah, because like maybe I'll for, try that. For me, like if I can't, if I can listen back to something and if I cringe, then. For me, like that's enough. Like, okay, right. something needs to yeah. change there. So you don't listen to your sets, like you don't. That's another thing. I know guys who like bring complicated audio equipment and like oh, I gotta geez. get my set. Dude, you're doing three fucking minutes. You're not that good. Yeah. Like, just I'll take my just phone up there. If take I, your phone. Yeah. Take a small it. recorder. But yeah. like people who are like setting up video cameras in the back, like with well, the lighting, shitty. Oh, start this for me. Oh, fuck you, man. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I say I have the hardest time like doing a set and actually remembering everything that I said because like for me, I'm still kind of in that like nervous. I yeah, have hard, yeah, I have like a hard time remembering what I'm going to say. Like, so I'll have my phone in my pocket. <laughs> do you just, do you have a harder time remembering what you're going to say or what you just said? Uh what I just said. Yeah. Like because for me for I'm fear, thinking for, of for fear of repetition. Um partly, well, no, it's because I'm looking so far, I'm looking into the I'm I'm thinking of the next joke. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I mean, it's do you find it's that like ma- a, a bridge that's like falling behind me? Right. <laughs> but does that make you sound like you are distracted? Because that can probably happen. Maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I'm quite possibly. I, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll. I'll have to listen to that because. Because like, if I, you're thinking about the next bit, you need to be aware of it. But if that's all you're concentrating on, then you. I, I hate it when I see guys do jokes and and then you can tell they're just doing this joke because they just want to get to the next one because they might not have faith in this one. Okay, let's start this other yeah, joke. Yeah. And then you've completely wasted that whole Moment. chunk of yeah. yeah. I don't I don't know if I'd quite do that. Like luckily since I've been I've 
been doing stage stuff for like well over 10 years. So like I, I feel comfortable on stage, but mm-hmm. I still have that like the butterflies and like there's no band behind me to save me or an improv yeah. group to save me. So like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm still new to it. I'm still getting used to it. And well, your worst critic is going to be yourself, hopefully. Yeah. And then also other comics. Right. <laughs> like, well, and I love that. Like I finally have gotten to the point where I'm getting to know people and uh, which is a cool feeling when you, cause you walk in, you're like, okay, like people are waving to me. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm kind of in it's this a community. little subculture yeah, now. It really is. It's a weird community of the most maladjusted, yep. socially inept Angry, people. Angry, yeah, just bitter people. <laughs> well, not really bitter, just there's no other outlet. Some are bitter. Yeah. Some, well, some are. Just don't believe, don't believe someone if they tell you you're great and don't believe someone if they tell you you're terrible. Right. Yeah. Because you're going to get that around here. Yeah. You're going to get people going, oh, you're, you get that you anywhere. suck ass. Yeah. Yeah. You got to find the middle ground. Right. You will. I'm sure you're, you're, I mean, you've been on stage for a decade. Well, I mean, in a musical but fashion. Yeah, but it's still experience. Like you still yeah. experience yeah. with an audience and performance yeah. and I, I've only not had... just making your buddies at the copier laugh. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Like, yeah, it's definitely, it's an interesting transition because like I said, there's so many similarities to music. Mm-hmm. Like it's uh, like writing jokes is so similar to writing songs. Like it's, it's just fascinating. Like the deeper that I get into it, like it's, it feels very familiar, but very, very foreign at the same time. Yeah. Um, okay. So you guys want to play some games? Let's play a game. All, All right. right. So, I, I, I brought one bullet and a revolver. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Here we go. go. All right. And yeah. Okay. So we're going to play a game called okay. copycat. And the way that this works okay. is we're going to use this bell. Okay. And uh, we're going to start off a scene with you two. And at closer? any point, are which actually, yeah, let's all move a little closer. A little, we're already in a porta potty <laughs> in the Paramount bathroom <laughs> parking so, lot. So, um, um, you guys are going to be playing out a scene, and at any moment, I'm going to hit this bell. You're going to stop, and then I'm going to pick it up with the same line of dialogue that you just said, and we're going to start okay. up a completely new scene. I like that you had you had a bell more at the ready than your phone. Right. <laughs> like a well, bell's been here the whole phone goddamn time. Was in my pocket, right next to me, and oh. I went hunting all over the place. So, you guys are going. co-writers of a TV show. Okay. Oh, already after a good start. Right. Sure. And um, let's see here. You are trapped in an under. You're trapped underground in a mine. Okay. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna have to read any more your damn jokes about rocks, am I? Listen, I've got twelve pages that I think could be punched up a little bit, but I think they're good. They say write what you know, but this is ridiculous. I think it's screwing with our creative process. I knew we never should have gone to Chile. Well, I knew I never should have gone to Chile because of their terrible appetizers. Why did you take me all the way down to Chile? That was an expensive plane ride. Yeah, I know. That's why I had you ride in the suitcase. <sighs> this food's not worth it, man. No, it's really not. I mean, it's... Well, it's, then why'd you bring us down here? It's Chilean cuisine. What was the... It's Chilean cuisine. It's Isn't it delicious? <laughs> yes. I'm glad that you're enjoying our Valentine's Day. Well, you know, thanks to my irritable bowels, <laughs> this is going to be a very romantic... <laughs> thanks. For my irritable bowels. <laughs> this injection works. Is that what you're calling it now? <laughs> yes. That was the worst Christmas Eve I've ever had. And if not for your injection, I wouldn't have irritable bowels. <laughs> and if not for your injection, I wouldn't have irritable bowels. Worst love making of all time. Yeah, I think I covered that. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of Chilean miners, deep, dark, terrible thrusting. (laughs) These Chilean miners (laughs) just just struck Dookie Gold. (laughs) Oh my God. That was awesome. Oh, these Chilean miners. It all comes back to them. That was awesome. As long as they don't tell their parents. Yep. It's true. Different type of miner. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to move on to our next and last game, which is going to be starring at Mr. Spencer Hicks and yes. Joel Decker. I might Whoa, be a walk-on. No. I might be a walk-on. Do it. 
We'll see. But, um, okay, so based you on guys suggestions. guys pretend to like yourselves. <laughs> oh. 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 Based on suggestions from our listening audience, Ooh, okay. uh, this is a game called Whose Line Is It Anyway? Oh, nice. Whoa, are you and, allowed uh, to call it that? Yeah, well, that's, oh. the, that's the name of an actual game. And the way that this works is that you have lines of dialogue in this hat here. Okay, okay. And I'm excited. you're going to be playing out a scene. And at any moment okay. within the scene, you're going to grab the piece of paper, you're going to read this line of dialogue and inject it into the scene. Right. Cool. So the storyline is, according okay. to our uh, listener suggestions, Spencer, you'll be playing Robin Hood. Nice. Joel, you'll be playing the Sheriff of Nottingham. Ooh. Classic. Who have found themselves on a blind date together. Oh, so, good. All right. So here we go. Robin Hood. Robin Hood and the Sheriff, Sheriff, Sheriff of Nottingham, Nottingham have found themselves on a blind date together. So that made uh, Miriam thought we would be uh, good together. Yeah. I think she. Uh, she doesn't, she's a really bad judge of character. Yeah. How do you... Because I, I, I don't... I mean, I don't want to bring this up right now. Okay. Um, well, I will. I think that I know that you're the one that's taking out all of my coins at nighttime well, to give to poor people. Here's the thing. I, I just want to get out of the way so we have a good night. Right. You know. No, I'm, I'm glad to get this out in the open. I, uh -huh. uh, I have recently felt the burn. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing I've learned from that is for the best seat in the house, you'll have to move the dog. Hmm. I've heard that. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge, in dem democratic socialism, that's a huge tenant. Moving the dog? If you want the best seat in the house. Yeah. Sometimes, though, you can just sit on the dog, and it's very comfortable and warm. No, this is a metaphor. You're the dog. Oh. Oh, well, this just took a turn. Yeah. So. You've got the best seat in the house, man. I'm like trying to re going. redistribute this wealth, you know? So I have the best seat in the house. Yeah. Starting off with compliments already? <laughs> like where this date is going. Yeah. Well, I'll meet your compliment. And uh, just know that I think that you're uglier than a shaved skunk in June. <laughs> a, shaved, a shaved skunk. Yeah. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not rude. Uh, well, I, I do shave my skunk. <laughs> I like this. Uh, My best seat in the house is tingling. And because, uh, and because we're in the uh, whatever time we're in, uh, early 1970s animated time. <laughs> yes, I'm some sort of bear possum thing, and you're a I'm, fox. I'm a fox. <laughs> uh, we don't have showers here in Nottingham because we look ourselves clean. Because <laughs> we're animal and people, and that's why I smell like a skunk. Hmm. That seems very interesting, but certainly we should move on from this. Yeah, let me tell you what my grandma always said. Okay. About you smelling or yeah. about you shaving? About me shaving. Let my me hear grandma, what old Grandma Hood said. She said, uh, and this is because she was from the hood, mm -hmm. she said, the boys in the hood are always hard. Well. Grandma never left the hood very often. <laughs> it doesn't sound like she did. The boys in the hood are always hard? Yeah. You like hard boys on you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I shave my skunk. <laughs> Because you don't want the odor. Well, it still lingers. <laughs> it lingers in your log cabin house? Yeah. Do you live in a log cabin house? And I sit on dogs. <laughs> oh. To stay warm or to protect your... No, because I have the best seat in the house. Oh, I get it. Wow. Well, I'm just going to say this about... I think I think it's going very well. I think the shots helped. We've confused every single person sitting around us. Well, they're not. I'm not here for them. I'm here for you. Well, you know what? Let me just tell you that weebles wobble, <laughs> but they don't fall down. That's like our love, isn't it? It is. Well, no, we've had some ups and downs. We've had some weebles. <laughs> and some wobbles. But we didn't let it get the best of us. Nope. You know, the weebles didn't destroy us. All these, all these differences, and we're still here. On, on our first day, <laughs> we've managed to make this last for two minutes and 45 oh, seconds. Oh, hello, waiter. Hi. Um. So the lady at the bar just sent me uh, over... Um, and she wanted to to tell you all, uh, Trump for president. Ah, oh, yeah. Fucking bitch. <laughs> 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 oh, that was awesome. Oh, good times. Man, thank you guys for coming on the show. This has been really, no, really no, cool. Thank you. This was awesome. Well, good. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Uh, plug yourself on social media. Uh, Spencer, you just released a new album. Where can I did, you find I did. that? Uh, you, can, you can find it on iTunes. Um, Spencer Hicks. Uh, love it or give it back. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Spencer Linux, or you can just find me on Facebook and poke me. 
<laughs> but, still do that. but you'll have to move the dog. Oh, oh, there's and, your punchline. Uh, plug Best OKC, seat in the house. Plug OKC Comedy. Oh yeah, OKC Comedy. We've got uh, we've got some great shows coming up. We've got Kyle Kinane uh, coming in next yes. month. We've got David Cross coming in uh, yep. April. April. Yeah. April. Uh, and then we've got Greg Proops coming in as well. And uh, we're working on a date for Tignataro. And where can we find all of that information? You can online? find all of that at OKCComedy.com. Yoss. And where can we find you on social media? At Spencer Linux. At Spencer Linux, or you can just look me up on Facebook, whatever. Right on. And Joel? Uh, yeah. We have, well, we've recently been able to listen to you on the radio at yeah. uh, The Cat. Is That's that true. Right? On Rick and Brad. Rick and Brad. Rick and Brad. I co-host whenever Rick's not around. Yeah. You know. Well, and um, so when can we tune in what station? What's I don't know. <laughs> it's, Perfect. It's, uh, I, I get a call like the night before, like, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, nothing. You want to come in? Yeah. All right. Well, what time is the Rick and Brad show? Six thirty to ten on Rock one hundred point five, The Cat. Good God, that's early. And where can you we like find that you on social media? Uh, at Joel David D on both Instagram and Twitter. Yes. Or on Facebook. I'm not as active as I should be on it, but then I'm like, I'm not a fourteen year old girl. Thank you, Brian, for having us. Hey, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys this is a whole again bunch for of fun. coming on. This was this is really cool, and like I learned a lot, and hopefully our listeners do too. Cool. Yeah. So, and if you, you want to do stand up comedy, do it. Yes. You'll figure it out and as you suck go. Suck at we it. We just we just turned this into a forty second podcast. Suck at yeah. it hard. And you can, of course, follow Okie Show Show on Twitter and Facebook at Okie Show Show. Uh, you can also go to prairiedogpictures.com slash blog where you can find the actual blog that goes along with this podcast. And then if you're listening, go to iTunes. Please subscribe and tell your friends and enemies. And that's it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okie Show Show.